Welcome back. In the last video, we used a table of values to graph a rational function. And also in that video, we learned about asymptotic behavior. That is, we learned what happens to our graph as it approaches an asymptote from both the right and the left. And we learned that our graph will uh, get closer and closer to the asymptote, um, but it will not cut through it. Uh, it won't jump across it, although it might jump across it, but we're not going to cover that right now. Um, but we know our graph gets closer and closer to the asymptote, um, but never quite reaches it. In this particular video, we're going to take this a step further. We're going to graph rational functions, but we're going to sketch it without using a table of values. And I've provided you with the notes. Uh, to follow along so you will not need to write all this down and I'm not going to go through it step by step um, but as we graph this function um, follow along with the notes make notes as we go uh, write things on your notes that I gave you uh, so you can understand the particular process so we're going to graph this particular function q of x equals x squared plus x minus 12 all over x squared minus 2x minus 15 but we're not going to use a table of values. We're going to, we're going to graph some key points and then um, we'll use our understanding and our knowledge of asymptotic behavior then to sketch the rest of the graph. And if you follow along and then you use a graphing calculator, you'll be um, surprised and amazed and impressed with yourself at how close you can get to actually graphing the exact function by just using a few key points. So as the notes say, um, you can follow along. We're going to plot the y-intercept. We know how to do that. We've been doing that all year long. We're going to plot the x-intercepts. We're going to find the restrictions on our domain, which will give us our vertical asymptotes. And then we'll graph also the horizontal asymptote and then we'll sketch our graph. In today's example, we won't have to do F. We won't do any test points, but that will come up uh, later on. So let's take a look at our function. Hopefully you have some graph paper handy. And we are going to graph our function Q of X equals X squared plus X minus 12, all divided by X squared minus 2X minus 15. And we'll follow the process as outlined in the notes. We'll begin with graphing the y-intercept, the x-intercepts, the vertical asymptotes, the horizontal asymptote, and then we'll sketch. Okay. Well, let's begin with the y-intercept. We know the y-intercept is our output when our input is 0. So the y-intercept intercept, we put 0 in for x and solve for y. Well, the y-intercept, you should be able to eyeball that. If we put 0 in for x, what happens to x squared and x? Well, they become 0, they drop, essentially drop out. And same with our denominator. So our y-intercept really becomes our constant. Our y-intercept, then, is negative 12 divided by negative 15. So when I put 0 in for x, I will output negative 12 over negative 15, which then simplifies to positive 4 over positive 5. So 0 4 fifths is our y-intercept, just the, the f constant of our fraction. Well, 4 fifths is almost 1. I'm going to plot that point. Okay, so I always look at the intercepts as bridges. That is going to be my route across the y-axis. I can only cross the y-axis at one point and that's the y-intercept. It can't cross anywhere else because there are no other intercepts. Now the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are where our function or our fraction becomes zero. Well, we're working with a fraction and the fraction becomes 0 only when the numerator becomes 0. So for the x-intercepts, we will factor our numerator and set each factor equal to 0. So x squared plus x minus 12 
factors to x plus 4 and x minus 3, we would set that equal to 0. That should be in your notes. We set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So we know that x equals negative 4 and x equals 3. Those are the values of x that will make our fraction 0, our output 0. So our x-intercepts, negative 4, 0, and 3, 0. And we'll go ahead and plot those points. 1, 2, 3, negative 4, and 3. And those are our only routes across the x-axis. Those are our bridges. So our graph has to cross the x-axis at these two points. It cannot cross anywhere else. can't cross out here, and it can't cross here. And it will cross or maybe bounce. This one's not going to bounce. Third, let's, do, let's find our vertical asymptotes. Well, the vertical asymptotes is where our function is undefined. Well, those are our restrictions on our function. And finding the restrictions, we work with the denominator. So factor the denominator. Our denominator factors to x minus 5 times x plus 3. And that better not equal 0. The denominator better not equal 0. So x minus 5 times x plus 3 can't equal 0. That would cause our function to be undefined. These are kind of like the black holes of inputs. So x better not equal 5, and x better not equal negative 3. And that is the location of our vertical asymptotes. So I have a asymptote here at x equals 5, and I have an asymptote here at x equals negative 3. Okay, so that's x equals 5, that's x equals negative 3. Those are the black holes, those are the asymptotes, those are invalid inputs. Our graph is going to approach this from the left side and the right side, but it's never going to touch it. So we're really close to graphing this. Let's find our horizontal asymptote. This is a little bit more challenging. The horizontal asymptote is only for really big x's, very, very large x's. Well, the big x's in our graph are positive big x's, so everything to the right of the furthest right vertical asymptote and everything to the left of the furthest left asymptote. Those are the huge x's. Those are the big ones. Okay, so I say think about budget deficit x's, huge x's, really big ones. Well, if our input is really, really big, billions and billions, what kind of impact does 12 and 15 have on our function? Well, not much. You know, the $12 of the $14 trillion budget just is not going to have that much of an impact. Neither is 15. In fact, if we take 14 trillion and square it, suddenly 14 trillion, or just plain old x, doesn't have much impact. So the horizontal asymptote, we want to take the highest value, the highest degree of x in the numerator and denominator and compare them. So for our horizontal asymptote, we take a look at x squared over x squared. That's the highest degree of x. That simplifies to 1. So then we know our horizontal asymptote in this particular problem, looking at x squared over x squared, is 1. So my graph is going to approach that line and never cross it. Okay, This is a function, so we're only going to have one output, one y for every x. So believe it or not, we are ready to graph. And let's start, let's start on the far left. Let's graph. Well, we have a bridge here. We have an x-intercept. So we are going to cross our x-axis at this point. 
Well, what we learned about asymptotic behavior, we know our graph has to approach our vertical and horizontal asymptote. And we can't go up this way, because that would mean crossing. So using our x-intercept, we know our graph will head down that way. Okay, And also, it's going to cross the bridge. Now, it's not going to cut back that towards the right. It's going to simply head off in that direction. As x's get really, really big, it's going to head closer and closer. My output's going to get closer and closer to 1, but never hit it. And I'm, I can't graph up here because I've already graphed down here, and I had to graph below the asymptote because I had this bridge, this x-intercept, to take. Let's look in the middle. I've got a y-intercept. I've got an x-intercept. So logically, my graph must pass between those two. I have these bridges. I have to take it. So my graph is going to head between those two. Well, I'm, as I continue to the left, I'm not going to come down because I have no bridge across the x-axis here. So then I know my graph is going to head in that direction using my asymptotic behavior. And it can't come back to the left. It's going to head towards my asymptote and head down in that direction. So I've graphed two of my regions already. Now, the final region on the far right, I have to graph something here. I'm going to have some valid x's. Well, you know, here we graph below the asymptote, so we might think, oh, I'll graph down here. Uh, wait a minute. There's no bridge. There's no way to get across the x-axis to head towards this asymptote. Okay? My graph has to get closer and closer to it, but I have no way to get there. So it's impossible for me to graph down here. I can't do it because there's no bridge. There's no x-intercept. So I can't get across the x-axis. So that means using my knowledge of asymptotic behavior, I have to graph above this asymptote in this particular region, and I can just sketch it. I don't even have to plot points because I know with asymptotic behavior my graph is going to look something like that. So we have ske sketched a rational function, and we've done it using two vertical asymptotes, a horizontal asymptote, and plotting three particular points. Now if you plug this function into your graphing calculator, you'll see that the picture of our graph is almost exactly like what shows on your calculator. So, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll do some practice problems, and we will see you in class.